Hey everybody, this is Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I am just giddy to share with you this card that I watercolored, like I made this. I'm so proud of myself. I hope that you will give it a shot because I know you can make something just as amazing. And I'm gonna give you lots of tips and tricks along the way to share how I did this. So first of all, I want to show you my color palette and how I came up with it because you're gonna love it. <laughs> so I was... Um, prepping projects for something I don't even know and I had like a hundred stamp pads out okay maybe not but I had like almost all of them out on my table and these four were right next to each other and I looked at them and I was like oh my gosh that looks really pretty like that's a great color combo and so I thought what could I make that would work great with these colors and then I had the challenge for this week what which was um the um, SIP challenge, which we did flowers, like coming up flowers, I what up flowers, whatever. That was the challenge. So I was like, oh, I have, um, I'd been dying to use the set because I hadn't used it in a while. So long story short, here we go. Um, the cards or the, the stamping is really basic. All you're going to do is stamp in black hence the black, but the coloring is amazing. And I'd say it's easy. And I know sometimes people are like, well, it's easy for you. But I think if you're patient and try to just practice a little bit, you really will see that it is quite easy because um, it's all in the shading. And that's what I'm going to give you lots of great tips on. So first of all, I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper under here. Whenever I watercolor, though, I do highly recommend having something you can clean your brush off on next to you. Now, I'm using the Archival Black because it is good black permanent ink, but it also is going to dry, not fast, but it, it will dry out pretty quickly. So once you ink it, you have to be ready to commit to the place you want to put it on your card. So... Now, the other crucial part to success with watercoloring is watercolor paper. I started with watercolor paper. It is designed specifically to work with watercolor and shading and going over images multiple times without pilling. Now, I'm also going to use my aqua painter. I love my aqua painters. They're so awesome and a perfect tool for this. And then, like I mentioned, I have this rag. This is just a burp rag from when my kids were little. It will last a really long time before I wash it, and then I just throw it in with a load of, pardon me, dirty clothes. Um, I meant dark clothes. <laughs> I don't put it in with lights. I put it in with darks because I don't care if it gets stained darker, but I do not want any of this ink to get in my whites. So, okay. Now, to color this, I'm going to work kind of a little section at a time and then move to the next section, and I think that's the easiest. I'm also going to start with the lightest color first, which is Peekaboo Peach. So, of course, I'm going to squeeze my ink pad to the lid, and that is where I pick up all that glorious color. Sometimes when water coloring an image like this that's a little larger and I'm only using, you know, one main color, um, you might want to use some re-inkers on your um, ink pad just to get a little bit more color, but you don't have to. Um, and you, that can be a little dangerous if you get too much in there. It will leak later on, so you don't want that. All right, so I'm just going over each of these flowers with a kind of a base coat of the peekaboo peach then what I'm going to do is build up my color and this is really the key of water coloring is you're building up colors so I'll take and just as you can see I'm using these these drawn in sketchy lines as kind of a guide for where the darkest colors should be so you can see I'm just adding in and then because it's wet, it will naturally blend, which is great. I want the colors to be darkest at the base of the pet petal, you know, towards the center of the flower and then get lighter. And then you know how there's like these little, these little spots right here. Those I almost want to be white. I just added more color on them. But what I can do is clean off my brush. That's what this rag is perfect for. And then I can literally pick up color with my clean brush, I'll get rid of that color and pick up some more. And do you see how it got a little lighter? 
So that's the beauty of this watercolor paper. So again, I'm just gonna add color to the base of each petal, getting darker and darker. And um, watercoloring is kind of balancing out wet and dry. So what I mean by that is when you're coloring the wet of the water on an area of your cardstock is going to blend out and typically it blends fairly evenly so when you do that your color will get darker and darker which is great like I said we want to build up the color but the problem is is if you want lighter areas if it's wet just like the darker areas it will blend out and you don't want that entirely so what I also do is allow things to kind of dry out a little bit like this this leaf up here or petal I'm sorry is drier so I'm gonna add more color and do you see how it's not blending immediately it's it's staying lighter which is exactly what I want and we'll just keep going now I know that this video is going to take forever <laughs> because watercoloring is not the fastest thing in the world but the good news is that as um, I will probably speed this up as at some point so you can see every single stroke I take, <laughs> every single move I make. Sorry, I can't have help myself. Um, but know that it does take a little while to color this. But it's just like this adult coloring craze. It's so relaxing. I love coloring. But again, my every everything I'm doing is geared towards a light top of my pe of my petal and a darker base of my petal okay so now I think I have the entire flower part covered which is perfect and then I'm really going to focus on bringing in that darker shade and then in a minute I will add really add more darker shades by adding a darker color of ink I need to get some more ink here so um, that is really helpful to add that second color. Okay, so I think I have the colors here how I would like them. Now, you might notice here the lines are a little bit more subtle than here. So what I'm going to do is kind of come back and blend that petal a little bit to try and ease the color. And one thing that helps is if you bring back in a little bit more um, of the peekaboo peach just to kind of help blend those colors. So I'll do that for each of my 
each of my leaves or petals. Gosh, I keep interchanging those two, which is not what I mean. Okay, so that looks a little better. I'm just going to put a little bit more color there. There we go. Okay, now, oh, and then I need to do the buds. So again, here, I'll just put color across the whole thing, and then we'll come back and add some shading. Next, we'll do the leaves. And here again is the same idea. I'm going to pick up and do green. This is old olive all over the leaf. And then I'll come back and add some more color. Ooh, that started out a little dark. So you can see I'm kind of taking away some of that color. Now, again, when you're going to another color, like a completely different color, not a shading color, you want to make sure that you um, don't mix the border between the orange and the green so that you don't get bleeding occurring because that will not be pretty. So we don't want that to happen. So if you need to allow things to dry between colors, um, definitely take that extra time or hit it with your heat gun because otherwise you will get a muddy mess. And some colors, it won't matter too much, but like green and orange, uh, let's just say, will not make the prettiest color when they mix. So you just don't want that to happen. And then just add a little bit more color. Okay, so there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Now, for this next step, I also want to make sure everything is good and dry because, again, I don't want to mix colors. We're going to use Pool Party. We're going to need a lot of it. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but we'll need a good amount of Pool Party. And we are going to do the background. So we, of course, want to start with a very nice, clean brush. And then I'm going to want, um, as you can see on my sample here, it's darkest on the underside and then lighter on the top side. And that kind of goes with how the natural lighting would be. So, and you might also see that I go not all the way out to the edge. I'm kind of leaving a little border so you can kind of create that border as you go, as you paint. It happens a little bit more naturally than you might imagine. But again, here we're going to be careful. We don't want blending to occur because orange into pool party is not going to be pretty. Not pretty at all. So I kind of like to kind of write, <laughs> draw my border on as I'm going a little bit. And then it's easy to fill in and keep within those lines. Again, where we want the darkest color right up against the flower images. And then and leaves and then get lighter as we go out. And get inside all those nooks and crannies, but again, being careful not to 
touch anything that could be wet. And here you can see I'm <clears throat> really letting my ink get a lot lighter. And sometimes I'll even start, you know, dark in the darker area just to ensure that I'm not going to have too dark a brush stroke out here. But I'm going right up to that edge and I'll do the same over here. It's really easy to do, especially on this watercolor paper. Again, this is not something that just regular cardstock would tolerate. A little bit you could do it on um, shimmery white, but even shimmery white does not have the versatility that watercolor paper has. It just won't allow for all of that complicated blending. And then getting back into all these little areas. And then after that, we're going to color the center with a black marker. So you could totally do this with a dark color. In fact, I initially kind of thought I would do it with brown, like chocolate chip or early espresso. But um, then I just decided to go with the black marker because I thought it would look good and it would be easy. <laughs> So that's why I chose that. I'm going to go a little darker right here. Okay, so there's our background. But doesn't that really make the image just pop? And I think it's that contrast of the orange versus the aqua. So, all right, we're going to, um, I'm going to hit this with my heat tool. There we go, because again, we don't want bleeding. So I've got my marker and I'm just gonna color all of those dots in. You know, um, I did leave the background colored nice and dark, so all we had to do was go over these little dots of the stamen, which is so awesome to do with a marker after all that fussy coloring we've done. And then I do also take a few liberties on adding a few more <laughs> just to fill out that center a little better. So you can totally do that as well if necessary. But isn't that beautiful with the dark, dark centers? Okay, and last but not least, we are going to spritz this with some uh, Wink of Stella. And I'm going to spritz it good because I like my... Wink of Stella on here. So I'm going to take my Wink of Stella and take my mark, whoops, take my marker and I'm just going to smack it against there and you can see I get some nice globs. This is another one um, that I watered down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. That's probably why I'm able to get those blobs on there, but isn't that beautiful? And then last but not least, I'm going to take and stamp this in black archival with the sentiment and the, all the stamps are from Birthday Blooms. I don't know if I showed that at the very beginning, but this is such a beautiful stamp set and I love the font that is part of the set for the words. I think they're really pretty. Okay, so For You is on there. It looks beautiful. And then I'm going to mount this onto a skinny little layer of um this is tangerine tango that's the darker orange color that i used and then we'll stamp it on oops i got a hair in here and we'll stamp it onto um or i'm sorry pop it up onto my peekaboo peach card
And look, I finished off a sheet of dimensionals. That makes me so excited. <laughs> it's the little things, isn't it? So, of course, all of the dimensions, colors, and supplies and whatnot are on my blog with photos. Please take a look at that. I hope that you love this card. It's I think it is so beautiful. Give it a try. Um, if you're new to watercoloring, maybe not try such a large image. Try Start with a smaller image to start watercoloring. For instance, you can practice on the smaller flower before you jump to the big one. Um, that'll give you a great practice round with um, a much smaller um, a surface to color and it's a little less frustrating but give it a try if you would practice you truly can watercolor truly like an artist and I hope you love this card thank you so much for joining me if you need any of these supplies or if you would like to take my watercolor school it's actually a six weeks six week six week course just check out my online classes page thanks so much for joining me guys have a great day bye